All right, check this out. So you want to show up to calls, the Zoom calls, the team calls, the Google Meet calls, the WebExes, and you want to look a million bucks. You want to look this good. You want the experience to be centered around you and you want to look good and you want them to have content that comes in as part of the feed and not separate screen sharing and all that mess. Uh, you want to be able to curate the experience that your uh, viewer has. I run training and this is what I show up like when I'm doing training and my content shows up with me so they're always focused on me and I'm showing them what I want to show them. Uh, uh, I'm doing things like Make audio with video. How hard is that? If you've Just ever done audio with, if you've ever tried to do audio with video when you're trying to share a screen or a PowerPoint deck, it doesn't work that easily. Uh, we can do things like share a separate screen. So this is a separate screen altogether. Notice this is all happening through. Um, through the webcam experience. This is all happening through the webcam experience. Uh, we can have special guests. So we can bring in a guest. This is a, a separate camera that runs, it can either be in studio. Hello, Fredo. This could be a separate camera that runs within studio or a separate camera that runs um, through another device. So say you want to bring someone in like on a radio show, uh, that can all be done and switched in. I'm going to show you how to do all of that right now. All right, before we start, this whole setup that you're looking at uh, is being done real time. This whole video, everything that you've seen so far is being done real time. This is what people get live as a stream. Uh, this is what uh, I'm going to teach you how to do. Uh, this is all being done. This video is not being edited. There's no, going to be no post editing. All the cuts, ins and outs and the pictures and pictures and all the stuff is going to be done, uh, is being done real time. Um, just to kind of show you the experience that you can uh, curate. Uh, before I show you the, the setup, I kind of wanted to talk a little bit about the goals that I had for this setup. You know, I do training and I want to show up, look a million bucks and deliver content that is punchy, that is sharp, that is to the point uh, and that people, frankly, pay good money for. So um, my first goal was to present like a pro. You know, you show up to uh, back in the day when you met people in real life, uh, you know, you dressed well, you put on a shirt or hopefully you put on a shirt uh, and you looked the part. Well, I wanted to kind of reflect what I was all about, uh, but to do that in a virtual way. So there's the lights going on in the background and we'll talk about that in a minute. But I wanted to present like a pro, which means things like a high quality SLR, which is what you're looking at there, uh, which means things like good quality lighting, which means things like high quality audio, which is just below the frame there. Uh, it means that PowerPoint is seamless and in the in, in part of the experience and not a separate screen sharing thing where you're bouncing around trying to figure out. The second thing I wanted to do was have a design that was kind of modular, a design that was not dependent on one big beast computer so all this stuff can happen. But instead I wanted to be able to plug anything in, whether it was a, an old school laptop or a, even a high-end machine. So I wanted a, a setup that allowed me to be reasonably modular and separated. So I've landed on a nice HDMI switcher that does all the heavy lifting and I'll show you that in a second. Uh, but I wanted, to, it was a choice really, right? Do you buy a high-end machine that can do all of this stuff or do you buy um, a, a hardware outside of the box that does all the switching for you and makes, all, makes life easy for you? That's what I went with. Turns out to be cheaper and faster and better and higher quality. Um, and the last thing is I wanted to produce the experience. You know, I show up and I want you to have an experience. I want to have an experience that's produced where I'm switching in and out and I'm controlling the experience. All you have to do is, is engage the way I kind of think you should engage and leave and, and curate the experience for you. Uh, so that's kind of important to me. Right, so how does this setup work? Bumps and bruises is what we've got along this way because we're doing it all real time. So how does this setup look like? Now, it's a little bit daunting, I know, but it's actually not that complicated. Uh, essentially, we've got a whole bunch of inputs. So these are all those inputs that you're seeing. Um, those inputs are my XLR microphone, which is the mic that I'm talking into, um, my camera that you're looking at me in, uh, an iPad, which is going into HDMI input one, uh, that's running my PowerPoint, so all those visuals that you saw is my iPad. Uh, an Apple TV, which is running uh, anything you want it to that connect to it. For me, it's that camera that you're seeing me run around in. It's this, it's this camera that you're seeing me walk uh, run around in. Uh, that's my Apple TV that's doing that. Um, and lastly, it's a, it's a last HDMI in uh, that for me is uh, this device down here that I'm drawing on when you see me draw. All of that is just a bunch of inputs that goes into a Blackmagic ATEM Mini. So it's just all HDMI input 
all that box does, it does all of this fancy switching that you're seeing and all of this really clean switching that you're seeing. Uh, it's happening because that Black, Blackmagic ATM Mini, ATM Mini is bringing all of those feeds in and allowing me to switch. And all it gives me, which is beautiful, is a USB-C webcam feed. So any computer that can see a webcam can see all of this switching. And that then goes into your Zoom call, your Teams call, your meeting call, or whatever it is that you're doing. Um, and essentially, that's the setup. It's not that complicated. Obviously, there's more going on. Uh, but essentially, that's the setup. Let's talk about these inputs um, and talk about how they're kind of set up for me because I think that makes sense. Um, so the first is microphone. So when we talk about a mic, uh, with, for me, it's a proper XLR uh, microphone. Let me show you my mic. That is my, uh, my Rode M5, but it could be any microphone. It's going into a, a, a box that is a, uh, let me show it to you actually. It's going into a, a, a device that is converting that XLR signal and it's a Saramonic Smart Rig 2. So it takes an XLR input and it, it runs it out to a 3.5 millimeter cable and then that goes into my mixer. Uh, some of you are probably uh, tempted to run USB mics and buy all these podcaster mics. Nothing wrong with them, but for me, buying a high quality mic is an investment. What it goes into is secondary. So buying a USB microphone means you're only plugging it into a computer. Buying an XLR microphone means you can plug it into any kit that you want down the road and you can buy a high quality mic. And most importantly, it's running into my HDMI switcher, which means my audio is now in sync with my video. Like my audio is in sync with my video. If you're running a USB mic, you tell me whether your audio is in sync with your video. Um, so that's consideration number one. So on the mic end, that's, that's, that's what I've got going. Uh, the second thing is the camera. So in my setup, it's a... It's a Canon M6 Mark II. Uh, it is overkill, <laughs> but I happen to also have uh, a proclivity to take photos. So, uh, but what you want is a camera that is also just running into your mixer, into your into your A10 Mini. Uh, that camera uh, needs to have a clean HDMI out, which this camera does. Uh, needs to be able to be powered. So it's important that it can be powered and run full time. So you don't want it to run on battery. You want it to be able to run either with a with a AC adapter coupler or your camera might support. It. I know some Sony cameras can run USB power, uh, but you want to be able to run uh, power constantly and you want a clean HDMI out. So you want an image that always looks like this and doesn't have any overlays and all that sort of stuff. I'm talking at a really high level right now, but this is an overview and I will go into detail in other videos. Uh, so make sure you subscribe and like and all those things that cool kids say that you should do uh, just so that you can get more content if you're, more, if you're interested in learning more. Uh, third thing in the mix is uh, a HDMI device. For me, it's my iPad. And that iPad is essentially uh, sitting right there. And that iPad is my input. That iPad is those, those visuals that you see sitting beside me over there. Uh, that's just an iPad uh, that should be really a uh, more of a, uh, a laptop that should be a, a, a MacBook or a, or a, or a PC uh, that gives you a nice clean HDMI out because iPads are not the best at doing this kind of stuff. Um, uh, but that gives, that gives me that. And the nice thing about that is my notes sit right next to my camera lens. So I can talk to you like this where are we? I could talk to you like this and see my notes and talk about modular design and peek over and see my notes, but I'm still always, if I remember to keep looking at the lens, I still get to manage to look at the lens. So I've got an iPad that does my notes, but that could be any input. Um, I run a Bluetooth, um, I run a Bluetooth, uh, what do you call these things? presenter thing. <laughs> uh, this is a, t a Satichi one and it means that I don't have to be tapping around trying to move my slides backwards and forwards and you kind of, I can keep focused and just keep this in my hand. Um, then we got uh, two other inputs here. We've got the Apple TV, which is bringing in all that video content that you're seeing whenever I'm bringing this camera up, which is actually just a phone plugged into my Apple TV. Um, that runs through my Apple TV as an input and a spare HDMI, which happens to be this screen that you're looking at here. Let me show it to you. All of these drawing I'm doing, I'm actually drawing on a separate device. In this case, it's also an, a secondary iPad, um, but another HDMI. All of those things just go into this mixer. 
not that complicated. And the switcher, the ATEM uh, Blackmagic Mini, uh, the, the Blackmagic ATEM Mini, um, one take, remember, uh, is, is doing all of the smarts and switching. And all it's doing is outputting my USB to my computer and that's showing up as a webcam. But let's talk about another element in this mix that is really important and that is the Elgato Stream Deck. So if we're gonna produce a, an event, if we're gonna have the ability to move fluidly and quickly between content, you don't wanna be mucking around touching mixes and all that kind of stuff. So plugged into my, my computer is this Elgato Stream Deck. What a Stream Deck is, is it gives you the ability to just press buttons, see how I'm switching? Then I'm switching over to there, let me switch to my full screen mode, and then I'll switch back. And I've got the ability to switch to any one of these scenes. So you're gonna disappear, and then we're gonna reappear. How cool is that, man? All live, all real time. Um, the Black Magic, the, the, stream, the Elgato Stream Deck is what gives you the ability to just produce and to be focused here while you switch over to here and then you're doing stuff and you, you're just pressing buttons on your Stream Deck. For that Stream Deck to work, you need a Stream Deck. Um, you also need the software for the Stream Deck to configure it all, but there's two key components if, in case you want to run off and not see any of the other videos on how to set this up. You need to write some macros that talk to the Stream Deck and you need an app called BitFocus Companion which automates Stream Deck and allows your Elgato to talk to your, your Stream Deck to talk to your, um, your HDMI switcher, your, your ATEM Mini. Sounds all complicated and I don't want to get too deep into the weeds uh, but critically important I think is a, is a Stream Deck, is the ability to just be able to switch really easily and really fluidly uh, without having to muck around. Um, so that all is the basic setup. There's a couple of additional things in this mix that are kind of cool. Um, one of them is I, I run a HDMI monitor. So what you're looking at next to my camera there is a HDMI monitor. It's just a seven inch, H normally they get mounted on top of cameras. Uh, what that does for me is it lets me see my, um, it's kind of hard to demo it with um, when it can see itself, but it lets me see my show at all times. I always know what I'm showing because it's always showing up there uh, and it outputs audio for me into my mixer. So um, having a HDMI monitor is kind of an important part of the mix so you can always see your show and not have to worry about what's happening on your computer screens. Um, all of that in the audio sense, so that outputs audio. I don't wanna complicate the audio situation too much but I deliberately run all of my audio into a mixer and the reason I do that is, remember, you're now producing a show. You're in the big leagues, right? So you're producing a show, which means you don't only want to hear what your audience is saying in the call. You want to hear what you're producing. You want to hear uh, the videos that you're playing. and You want to hear what they sound like. So my HDMI switcher goes into my audio mixer, which is this bad boy right here, as does my computer. So the audio from the call shows up into the mixer and the audio from my produced show shows up into the mixer. And all that does is it runs into a Bluetooth transmitter, which then I can hear in headphones. So I normally have my little, uh, these guys, these bad boys, my little Bluetooth buds. Uh, these are what I show, these are what I have in my ears normally when I'm doing my calls. Um, the reason I run it all into a Bluetooth transmitter, in fact, into that Bluetooth transmitter, the reason I do that is resilience. Bluetooth is not the most reliable thing in the world, though it's the coolest thing in the world, it's not the most reliable thing in the world. So I have a Bluetooth transmitter that's paired to multiple earbuds, multiples of these. So when I run out of juice when, during a call, if something goes wrong with my Bluetooth headphones, which you've known happens to you as well, I just open another pair because they're cheap pairs that I use, um, and then I'm just repaired and I keep going. Most people don't even know that I've had a technical problem. So. That's kind of the high level setup. Let me show it to you in all its glory, just on a camera real quick. PowerPoint uh, running on, a, on, in this case, an iPad, but anything that outputs PowerPoint into my HDMI switcher. My camera goes into my HDMI switcher uh, with clean HDMI out. Um, my microphone goes into my HDMI switcher, my A10 Mini. Uh, my second computer goes into my switcher. Um, my, this thing that you're looking at, which is just my phone talking to that Apple TV down there, goes into the HDMI switcher. Uh, all of them go into a HDMI switcher, which outputs itself 
uh, both to a monitor so I can see what's happening, but also to the computer that's running the call. Um, and then all of that goes uh, into a USB-C connection. That's my, that's the A10 Mini, that's the business, right? Uh, all of that goes into uh, a webcam driver and an XLR mic goes into that. That's the setup in all its glory. Whoa, let's go back before you see the fact I'm wearing tracky pants. Um, all of that is what hangs together and gives you the ability to switch backwards and forwards and look a million bucks as you do it. Up above, I'll touch on it real quick. Where are we? There we go. Up above is a bunch of lighting. There's a million ways to do lighting, so I'm not going to go into it in detail, but good lighting. Uh, the other bit of lighting that I think is key is just some really nice... Um, um, some really nice RGB lights that kind of fill the room. So like that looks pretty good to me. Um, so that's the experience that I think everybody should have when they're running calls. Hopefully that gives you an insight as to what's required to do that. Um, I want to run more videos. I want to be able to do this more. So drop me a comment down below if you have questions. Uh, most importantly, I'm trying to kind of do this on a regular basis, but I need a little bit of love. I mean, I'm an insecure uh, presenter kind of person. So um, if you're on YouTube, can you please hit subscribe? If you are on LinkedIn or wherever else I'm share this, sharing this, um, uh, please share it. If you thought there was value in what you just saw, uh, share it along with people who you think would get value out of it. If you thought it sucked and it was terrible, then share it with somebody you don't like. Either way, share it. Uh, subscribe and like and all the cool things that you're supposed to do with this kind of content. Uh, I want to go into more depth with everything that you saw just to kind of show you how it all works. So if you want to set it up, uh, like what the macros look like and what the audio setup looks like in more detail, all that sort of stuff. Uh, but comment down below, tell me what areas you want me to go into a bit more. Um, subscribe on the things that you can subscribe to. Um, and uh, rocking on, man. Thanks for your attention. You've survived this long. How good are you? Out. <laughs>